from Abuja. Hello, thank you for being a part of our show. We appreciate you. I'm Magnus Paco, and this is Magnus Paco GVA, Global Views Africa. As you know, it's all about how we can raise the level of living. That's what it's all about. In view today, economic integration for competitiveness. Can African countries find more value in economic integration? In this episode on economic integration and competitiveness, we get solid contributions from Ambassador Tom Amalu of Kenya, Ambassador Daniel Njuli of Tanzania, and Honorable Henry Bayanzaki of Uganda in recent separate discussions in our Magoni studios. But before that, in our economics, you can use the perils of the internet. How to avoid being blindsided inside the internet. Now up next, we bring you a quick discussion on crude oil production leaders in our quick view. That's coming right up. In our quick view, we take a look at some oil production indicators. Crude oil is clearly an important source of energy in the world today. By oil production, we mean the sum of barrels extracted on a daily basis through the drilling process. According to the International Energy Agency, IEA, over 60% of the world's total oil output of crude oil comes from the top 10 largest producers. In this connection, which of the following countries is not among the top three in global oil production? Russia, Saudi Arabia, Iran, and the United States of America. Which of the following countries is not a founding member of the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, which incidentally accounts for about 42% of global oil production. Nigeria, Venezuela, Iran, and Saudi Arabia. Stay with us for our answers coming up shortly. Still in view, economic integration for competitiveness in Africa. Can integration in Africa lead the continent down a more competitive path? But up next in our economics, you can use the perils of the internet. So who invented the internet? Never mind who did. The internet certainly is a phenomenal revolution. You can hardly be competitive or succeed in the world today in anything without it. Everybody is on it. Today, internet penetration is about 42% with over 3 billion users worldwide out of a total global population of about 7.3 billion people. This compares to a mere 0.4% penetration in 1994, when out of a global population of about 5.6 billion, only around 25 million people were on the internet. The internet is used by medical doctors, lawyers, engineers, yes, even economists, as a source of information. Literally everything you want or don't even want is on the internet. And this is where the problem even starts. So clearly the internet is invaluable, but it can also hurt you. Not every statement or story on the internet is correct. Some people have chosen the internet because that is where it is possible to post every kind of falsehood, literally with impunity. Believe me, I know this for a fact. All kinds of non-descript people can publish every manner of rubbish against you on the internet. If you are doing research, watch out. The data reported on the internet may not be correct. 
you must make sure of the validity, authenticity, and authority of the site from where you are getting your information. And then recently, people are creating false websites or pages of their enemies to damage their image. People are also invading or crashing websites to cause harm or to steal information from potential competition. And also now recently, large caches of data have been stolen from the online cheating site AshleyMadison.com. AshleyMadison.com is a site that promotes extramarital affairs. Now the stolen data from the site have been posted on the internet by an individual or group that claims to have completely compromised the company's user databases, financial records, and other proprietary information. The leak is already causing serious problems for many unsuspecting spouses among the 37 million users of the hookup service, whose slogan is, life is short, have an affair. The perils of the internet, our economics you can use. Before we start our discussion in view, here are our quick view answers. Iran is the country listed here not among the top three crude oil producers in the world. Nigeria, which joined OPEC in 1971, is not one of the founding members of OPEC. The Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, was founded in Baghdad, Iraq, with the signing of an agreement in September 1960 by five countries, namely Islamic Republic of Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, and Venezuela. To contact us for adverts and sponsorship, please see our information displayed on the screen. Can economic integration help to ease conflict and violence in Africa? Or will it bring about a different kind of conflict? Can it also help to promote economic competitiveness among African countries? We pick up the issue from a recent discussion we had in our Magoni studios with Ambassador Tom Amalo, High Commissioner of Kenya to Nigeria. I was looking at a report and it showed that Rwanda, and I was impressed to see this, Rwanda ranked 10th in the world in trust of politicians, well ahead of the United States and many other countries. And I said, this is what we're looking for. Yeah. And I also saw that many, and I think Kenya also was way up there. I saw that many African countries were pretty much high up there yeah. uh, in, in public trust. Because I'm thinking if that continues, then people will have the patience to work with the leaders, yeah. knowing that gradually we will get there because we're on the right path. But as things get a little bit more complicated, complicated meaning that as we get more inter-African trade, or intra-African trade, I meant to say, as we get more intra-African trade, and there's competition now within Africa, could we have other kinds of conflict, not physical violent Good conflict, point. but trade conflicts and Absolutely. things like that? Absolutely, and in fact, we, we expect with, that. Yeah. In fact, that is a very good kind of conflict, and we expect that. But it's not like the countries are sitting and saying, okay, let's wait for us to integrate and we'll find, think of a way to adjudicate. As we speak, there are structures within SADAC, within Eastern African community, within ECOWAS, structures that are being created that will minimize uh, these uh, non-tariff barrier issues, so to speak and also to adjudicate the challenges that come out of uh, trading difficulties. I have a problem in Kenya to bring my goods to uh, Nigeria because uh, Magnus has done X, Y, and Z. I can take him to court in his country and the adjudication will be in my favor. I also have, there are also instruments around arbitration which don't necessarily take you to court. And all our sub-regions, SADAC, 
Comesa, ECOWAS, East Africa have this instrument. They're fledgling, mm. but they're coming up. Let me stress this. In my minimal experience, but in everybody's knowledge, every businessman wants predictability, yes. which means you have to have a governance structure that enables the person who buys or sells to say, I can get justice if what I'm doing here doesn't go the right way. Yeah. So the most important thing for all of us, all of us Africans to put in place, is an independent judiciary that is incorruptible and structures that can enable quick dispensation of justice. If I have a problem in Kenya and I find it very difficult to resolve, I'll say, well, why should I put my money here? If today in Nigeria uh, I come with my $100 million investment and I have a challenge, yeah. and I have a, I have a challenge with, yeah. with Mr. X and the courts can't adjudicate at all, mm. or uh, there is because of systems which are not uh, predictable, mm. I cannot get an outcome quickly. My, my quick moves will be to diminish my footprint in that country and eventually move out and come in again almost as uh, a, a lesser partnership without the heft that my dollars will bring. Yeah. And that's not what we want. Yeah. Next, we have Ambassador Daniel Njuli with his perspective on the competitiveness and integration issue in Africa. Ambassador Njuli is High Commissioner of Tanzania to Nigeria. Are there too many countries in Africa? We seem to be the most fragmented if you look at the, con the continents of the world. You know, we've got 54 or so countries. You have to get um, the requirements you have to uh, have to go be uh, from one country to the other. Is that, is that why? Is that one reason we have problems? Too many countries? Too I don't many know. poor countries? <laughs> yeah. You know, those are all, all these are colonial relics. Yes. You know, they, they subdivided us into small, small, small countries. Yes. Some, of our, some of them which are not, cannot be economically viable yes. as such, but still they're there. Now, the, that's why the, the whole idea of Pan-Africanism yes. and Pan-African spirit yes. to unite the African countries yes. into one global United States of yes. Africa. Yes. Uh, and that's what regional cooperation is supposed to help yes, exactly. to resolve that's, so that you can freely go exactly. to these countries that's, without that, going through visa that, requirements. That is so. very true. That's yeah. very true. So it's very important to, to therefore, uh, make sure that the regional corporations, mm. the ECOWAS, the SADC, the East African community, the, the Maghreb, and whatever, mm are strong enough yes. so that ultimately the political federation might come yes. to Africa. With your great wealth of experience and background, what general thoughts do you have uh, for Africa in terms of Africa rising? What are the, like some key things that you would want to see our leaders do, practitioners do, business people do, to be sure that in fact we stay on a stable path uh, in the so-called um, uh, Africa rising pathway? Number one, yeah. there has to be a political will by the African leaders, by African presidents, to bring about change in their own countries, mm. to bring about development in their own countries. Yes. That is, they have to put the interests of their people mm. before self-interest. Absolutely. That's number one. Yes. If that is done, you don't have, then you don't, you wouldn't get into these conflicts which are taking place in Burundi, in some other parts of the, of, of the world, of, yes. of Africa. You see, put people's interest first. Number two, as I pointed out earlier, we have really to restructure African economies. Yes. We have to restructure African economies. We have to produce what we consume mm. and export what is in excess mm. or what, but certainly we have to restructure 
African economies. Absolutely. Without restructuring Af African economies, mm. we'll continue to be producing what we do not consume mm. and consuming what we do not produce. We have to restructure African economies. And in addition to restructuring African economies, value addition, mm. value addition yes. should, be take, should be taken on board. Mm. Everything, even those that we want to export to Europe, yes. should have some value addition yes. so that it can fetch more and can, we can get more money for the development of our people. And finally, uh, I would like to point out that the African uh, uh, economic blocks yes. have to really be serious. Mm. You know, they have to, because some of these economic blocks they have lots of squabbles mm. in within, Absolutely, yes. and therefore, to if 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 that continues to be uh, to go on, then it will not be possible for a globalized integration of Africa. Mm. You see. Finally, we conclude our discussion with Honorable Henry Bayanzaki, a cabinet minister in the government of Uganda. And, and there's attention being paid to Africa now, you know, from across the world, you know, from yes. China, the United States, you know, from Europe. Can we handle the world this time so that we don't become what we became uh, during the time of, uh, of colonialism? Can we handle this, the world? The strength of world is, the strength of Africa is in its unity. Yeah. The only reason why Africa we are managed were because we were the partition of Africa. We have smaller states that are weak. You have smaller states, you have like Rwanda, a weak state, Burundi, a weak state, Uganda, Kenya. It was fragmented. And because Africa was fragmented, states were weakened. Because states were weakened, we were easily conquered. So it's high time that Africa will come back together. We have the United uh, Africa. We, have, we make the vision of Kwame Nkrumah a reality. Much as we cannot achieve it overnight. But we should take advantage of these economic blocks, economic blocks that we're having, the OCOAS, the East African community, yes. we have the SADAC. So we first re build these blocks together. Let's have the inter-trade. Yes. There is more business within Africa than Africa trading with China, than Africa trading with America. So we let's have an inter-trade. I can't imagine coming from Uganda to Nigeria, that they have to pass in Europe first to come in. What, what, what a mess. I can't imagine that I cannot cross Congo, my immediate country neighbor, that I have to go to Europe first in order to come to Congo. That's a mess. We need to develop the infrastructure in Africa. An infrastructure in Africa that will serve the whole of Africa. A trans, let's have a trans railway from Mombasa to the coast. Let's have one from Cape Town to to Egypt, yes. let's have from West Africa, let's have a railway system that I can, if I'm going, for example, to Kampala, I could have gone with a, a swift railway Absolutely. system. So Africa, need, we need to invest in infrastructure. Look at the potential of Africa in energy. If Africa developed its, Africa, its energy potential, we would like the whole world. Look at the potential in the Congo River. Look at the, all the, look at the River Nile. Look at the, the potential of River Nile itself. Look at the fauna and flora that we have in Africa. So Africa, we need to unite. We need to plan together. And actually, me, I would even be, be, uh, be happy if to, instead of having the global plan, we have the Africa plan. So the African plan, we are now coming up with the African Union. So once we have the African Union, the issue that the, now the African Union, the vision of the African Union is 2060. That is too far. The world is moving very fast. The world left us a long time ago. So we need spirit. Our plans, we need spirit. And the East African Union needs to translate itself into an economic powerhouse rather than translating itself into a geopolitical uh, uh, alignment. So you cannot have a geopolitical alignment, political. It cannot serve the interests of Africa. We cannot be on the same pace with America. We need to have the economic powerhouse. Let's have an 
unit based on economy to galvanize our potential. We develop our, min we, our mineral potential. The mineral potential of Africa is in trillions Absolutely. of dollars, not in billions of Absolutely. dollars. Yes. When we are talking about oil, the everywhere, the oil is uh, getting depleted. The resources are in Africa. Diamonds in Africa. Gold in Africa. Iron ore is in Africa. Talk of any mineral, you will find it in Africa. Any depot, the biggest depot is in Africa. Talk about the, whatever you talk about, anything you want to talk about, it's in Africa. So let's Africa unite. Let's plan together. Let's end, let's end uh, these uh, useless wars. On that note, Honorable Minister Amute, thank you so very much for coming to see us. Thank you. Extraordinary. Thank you very thank much. You much. Thank you. Certainly, if governance improves and conflict is reduced, Africa can become even more globally competitive. However, discussions on economic integration and conflict resolution should begin to focus more at the community level. Even so, African economic communities such as ECOWAS, SADIC, or COMESA, and the rest of them have the prospects to successfully integrate the continent and increase community trade by concentrating their efforts on community capacity building in the appropriate management of their natural resources. As I've said in the past, I believe that a successful management and processing of Africa's natural resources, along with broad-based infrastructural growth, can speed a link-up for regional integration using industrial parks and effective community development and management. And this will attract new and broader trading opportunities all across Africa. What we need to be in step with global trends will be efforts to close Africa's well-known competitiveness gaps in key areas, including institutions, education, skills, community economic development, and appropriate technology growth. As former President Olusegun Obasanjo, one of the most extraordinary leaders Africa has known in recent times has said, Africa is ready to take the lead in world economic affairs, but has to do more in the area of economic integration and overlapping product demand. I agree with him and believe that in addition, for Africa to really take the lead, two things must happen. One, Africa must work to reduce the cost of production of goods and services by looking to reduce the cost of funds for investments and SME development. Two, Africa also has to provide the infrastructure and improve skill sets and attitudes and also aspirations needed to raise productivity and drive overall output. If we do these things, Africa will become more competitive and we will raise our level of living. I'm Magnus Paco, and that's my view. Hello.